Hey and welcome back to another video. So this is actually the final video in the Script UI data flow mini series and if you enjoyed this series as well then let me know if you have any other ideas for any other little mini series you want me to do then please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section but in this video what we're going to talk about is environment objects and we're going to basically discuss where you'd actually want to use environment objects and also the differences between this and using something like observed objects like we spoke about in the previous video so what is environment object? Well, essentially what it is, is it basically allows us to share a model or data between different views. So if you ever worked with UIKit before, you may have ever had to, you know, maybe use segues or you've maybe just passed in, you know, data via a delegate or passed in a data just via dependency injection, however you've done it. Essentially, environment object is that in Swift UI. It basically allows you to pass data between different views. So on top of that, it is basically more efficient to use environment objects over observed objects because all the data gets sent to the environment. So the environment is basically like the app state where all the data is held and any child views that actually use an environment property wrapper can access that data. So in order to actually do that, so what you need to actually do is use the environment object on the parent and any child views that are marked with environment object for that type can access that data and use the observable object, you know, to have a read or write to the data. So what we're going to do now is actually jump into an example, as always, a practical one, and see how environment object works and also as well a use case where you could use it. So let's do that now. All right, cool. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to do something similar to our counter, except this time we're going to basically have a pizza ordering. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically have a screen where you can actually order pizza. And then when you actually are happy with the amount of slices that you've ordered, we'll pass that data through to another view using a navigation link and the environment object. So let's see how we can accomplish that. So the first thing that we need to do is essentially define our view model that we'll basically use for tracking the amount of slices that someone has selected. Now, if you want to, I'm not going to go into too much detail here about observable objects and the published property. I've actually already previously done that in my state object video. So if you've not saw that, I highly recommend you check that out. And after that, I highly recommend that you watch the observed object as well. So let's create our view model. So we're going to basically define our all right, cool. So nothing too crazy here. We basically have our view model, which has a counter for the number of slices. Again, we have another function increase for to increase the um, counter and decrease to basically check to make sure that our counter is greater than zero. And if it is, then we can subtract a slice. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to use this view model within our main content view. So we're actually going to define a state object. So let's do that now. So you may be wondering why have I defined the state object this time in the actual main app and not the content view? Well, essentially, this is the pattern that environment um, or environment objects, I should say, actually promotes. So basically, the whole point of using an environment object is so that all the child views that basically descend from this can access the view model that you're going to basically want to access via the environment. So technically, you actually want your view model um, to basically be a state object that you define at the root. So what we're going to do now, so essentially what we're going to do now is we're now going to basically go into our content view and actually define a environment object so we can actually access this view model via the environment. So let's do that now. So we just go into our content view. All right, cool. So what we've basically done here is we've defined our content view should actually have access to our environment object being our view model. So what we're going to do now is actually build our UI. So let's do that now. And what I want to do is I just want to basically show you something. So as you can see, we've actually got an error here saying it cannot preview in this file missing environment object. So what does that mean? Well, essentially, whenever you're using a view that has the environment object, you know, uh, property wrapper in the previews, you need to make sure that you use the environment object modifier to inject your view model into the environment or else the preview will crash. As you can see here that we've got an error. 
So in order to fix this error, what we need to do is use that modifier. So on your content view, if you just do dot environment object, and then we're going to basically pass in an instance of our order view model. And now, as you can see, our error has gone away and our view has now loaded. So now that we've done this in our previews, we actually need to make sure that we do this at the root of our app, which is essentially our parent view, because without doing this, any children of this parent view will not be able to actually use the environment object and the application will crash. So just to show you what that looks like, I'm actually gonna run this on the simulator. And as you can see, now that I'm running on the simulator, you can see here that in the stat trace, we basically have a runtime error. So we have a crash. And it's basically pointing to this line here where we actually try to access the property within this view model. But if we actually look at the console in terms of what it's saying, it's basically saying that no observable object of order view model found. So it's basically telling us that it can't find this view model within the environment. So in order to actually fix this crash, what we need to do is we need to make sure that we actually inject our view model into the environment. So any child views who try to access this object within the environment can actually reference it because it's there. So let's go to our main app view. So let us go to here. And what we need to do is on our content view here, we need to make sure that we use the environment object modifier and we actually pass in the view model that we initialized before. So let's pass that in now. All right, cool. And now if we run the app, you'll see that application isn't actually crashing anymore because it can now find this view model because we've injected it at the parent view here. All right, cool. So what I'm going to do is we'll close this simulator because we're going to use the um, Swift UI previews. And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to basically build out one of the child views that allows us to actually increment and change the slices. So let's do that now. All right, cool. So what I've basically done, I've created a new Swift UI view called counter view. You can see here that I've actually declared our property as an environment variable. And I've also added the modifier in our preview to make sure that this doesn't crash. So this is technically, in my opinion, one of the downsides of using an environment object is that you always need to make sure that you need to use this um, environment object uh, modifier in your previews, which can get you know pretty annoying, or sometimes you can just forget. So that's why I like to do these two things first so I don't forget to do it. So what we're gonna do now is actually write the UI and actually use our view model to actually write some logic to increase and decrease it. So let's do that now. So now that we've actually used our environment objects here, um, I would basically now just need to go here and now underneath our pizza slices, basically going to use our counter view. Cool, like so. So now let's actually test this out and see what happens. Now, if I hit increase, you can see that the slices are increasing. If I hit decrease, you can see that the slices are actually decreasing. So that was just an example to show you how environment object works with child views. What we're going to do now is we're actually going to basically use an observed object for this child view because we're not actually passing data between two screens. We're just basically manipulating our state object. So let's go into our counter view. And then what we're going to do is rather than this being an environment object, we're going to say app observe object. And then we're going to take off this modifier because we don't need it anymore. And because it's expecting a view model, we're going to just basically inject it. So we're just going to say order view model like so. All right, cool. So now what we're going to need to do is go back to our counter view and we'll actually need to basically pass in our view model. Like so. Then let's see if this still works all okay. So now if I hit increase, you can see the slices are still increasing. And if I hit decrease, you can see that the slices are still decreasing. So what I like to do personally, when I need to decide between whether use, when to use observed objects and when to use environment objects is if the view is a direct child of a parent view. So in this case, counter view is basically a child of the content view then for me, it makes more sense to use observed objects rather than environment objects. 
But if you actually need to pass data between two different screens, then in my opinion, it makes sense to use environment objects who can actually just grab that data from the environment. So what we're going to do now is actually do that next bit where we actually basically grab data between two different screens. So now what we're going to do is create a new view called order confirmation view. So we can actually see how many slices someone has ordered. So let's do that now. All right, cool. And as usual, we basically have our environment object here and we automatically make sure that we always add in our environment object uh, modifier here. Now, the reason why we're using environment objects in this case and we're not using observed objects in this case is because this view is basically a completely separate screen. We basically want to pass data between our content view to this new screen so we can just basically grab the information via the environment in this view. So now what we want to do in this view is we basically want to just show like a summary to someone that they have basically got, um, you know, how many slices of pizza they've ordered. So let's do that now. So we basically have our piece of text here, basically saying that we want to order the counter amount of pizza slices. And then we just basically add a navigation tile because this is going to be used. This view is going to be in our navigation view. So we'll have a navigation tile at the top. So what we're going to do now is actually use a navigation link to basically um, push to this screen. And um, so let's do that now. So if we just go back here. So underneath our counter view, we're going to basically create a navigation link. And notice because we injected our view model into the environment within the root of our application, within our content view now, we have a brand new screen, which also has to access the environment. So technically, when we actually run this in the preview and hit this button, we should see the number of slices. So let's hit increase. We're going to say four. Actually, let's treat ourselves. Let's get five in it. And then let's hit confirm order. And as you can see, it takes us to our order confirmation screen and it tells us that we'd like to order five slices. And like I said before, because that view model is in the environment, we're able to actually access it and basically read the property counter. And because our counter view is using the observed object to basically write the new values to that property, it gets changed in our environment. So just to show you that again, we will go back to pizza order and you can see it's still maintained five and I'm on a bit of a diet. So let's just have two slices to treat ourselves because we're cutting and then I'm going to hit confirm order. And you can see here we have our two slices here. All right, cool. So what we could also do as well, if we wanted to, is we could actually have it where if someone pushes back to this screen, it actually resets the number of slices in the environment. So let's just quickly do that now. So what I'm going to do is in the view model, we're going to create a new function called reset. And then what we're going to do in this function is just basically set our count off to zero. So, and then what we're going to do is in our navigation view, so on appear, we're going to basically just reset the view model. All right, cool. So now let's hit resume and let's try that again. So I'm going to basically say I want three slices and we'll hit confirm order. It says I want three slices. And now if I go back to that screen, you can see now the count off gets reset because the view model uh, resets the count off. So as you can see, this is an example to basically show you how to basically, when to use environment object to basically pass data between two different screens and also a use case of when it's suitable to use observed objects for when you have a child view which you want to basically use to manipulate properties within your observable objects. What we're going to do now is go back to our presentation and just talk a bit more about environment objects. So let's do that now. So when will we want to use environment objects? So essentially we want to use it like we saw in our example before, if we need to actually pass data between two different screens. So if you want to pass data between one screen and another screen that are completely unrelated, environment objects is probably the best, you know, course of action. Also, this applies to if you have multiple views that actually to access the same view model, because that view model is being injected into the environment, 
then you want to basically make sure that you use an environment object to basically pull those values. And the final point is, it's good to use observed object, but you don't want to use it too many times. So if you find yourself using an observed object too many times between different views, then it may be better off to actually just use environment object so you can basically grab your observable object from the environment. Try to stick to using observed objects with child views that actually need to access your view model. If your child view or your view doesn't need to access it, then I would just default to using um, environment objects. So that's everything from me today in this video. Um, if you have any feedback, I'd really appreciate it and you know, love to hear it. So leave a comment in the comment section below. Also as well, if you enjoy this video, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, then subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. And if you hit the notification bell to basically get any updates from me on my channel when I release a new video and whatnot, that's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.